Am I the asshole for not pumping my girlfriend's gas? My, 19M, girlfriend, 18 female, got her license about three months ago, but last week was the first time that I've been in the car with her while she was driving. My car was in the shop and she came to pick me up from work and on our way back she decides to stop at a gas station. We pull up to the machine, she looks at me funny for a moment, doesn't say anything and then gets out the car and starts pumping her gas. When she gets back in the car, I ask her what the funny look was for and she says, really? How do I have a man in the car and I'm the one pumping gas? Because it's your car and you're the one driving? She says, wow, and you're not even a little bit embarrassed? Watching your girlfriend pump gas in the cold while you're sitting in the nice, warm car listening to music? I say, no I was actually quite comfortable and if I wasn't here, wouldn't you have to pump the gas by yourself anyway? She says, but that's the point. You're here. A woman should never to pump gas while a man's in the car. My dad, uncle, cousin, brother, nephew, whoever would have never just did what you did just now. I say, well, I am not them and I don't subscribe to that. Can we go now? Mind you. The whole time we're having this conversation she hasn't even started the car. The gas station is filling up with cars and she's literally hogging a machine. She says, I'm not moving until you apologize. To make it even worse, the guy waiting in the car behind us walks over and politely taps on the window and says, Hey, sorry, are you guys leaving or? She rolls down the window and asks him, If your girlfriend or wife was driving, would you still pump her gas? He says, Uh, probably? And she looks at me victory and we finally move. She says, Seriously, don't ever do that again. I probably should have let it go, but I couldn't. No, if we're in your car and you're driving, you're pumping the gas. She starts going off again until I can't take it anymore. I get out and start walking down side streets to a friend's place. She's following me calling my name and my phone, but I ignore her and eventually lose her when she gets stuck at a red light. Since last Friday I've been getting all sorts of angry messages and texts from her friends about how I am not a real man for not pumping gas and even my friends were telling me, yeah, man, you should always pump the girl's gas, it's just principle. That whole week was finals week so I didn't really pay too much attention to what they were saying but finals ended yesterday and I'm home now for Christmas. My extended family is all here, so I decided to ask them if a guy should always pump gas for the girl. I'm confused because all the men are saying yes, but all the women are saying that while they appreciate the men doing it, they can also do it by themselves, even when a man is in the car. They're all still arguing downstairs and it's getting pretty heated so I decided to write to you guys to ask am I the asshole and should I apologize? Not the asshole your girlfriend is inconsiderate and immature. This is coming from a woman, who can pump her own gas thank you very much. Did she expect you to pay for it too? Not the asshole. You guys have two different expectations, which isn't in itself a problem. You pump the gas, she pumps the gas who cares really. To each their own. However, how she treated you during this clash of expectations is a huge problem. She had an expectation of you that she didn't communicate and instead of communicating that expectation and having a kind conversation about it she pretty much just attacked you. That's not okay. If she wanted you pump the gas then she could have asked you. Not once have I seen a driver expecting one of the passengers to be the one to pump it unless asked to. Not the asshole. Am I the asshole for not going to my mom's house for Christmas and refusing to make my little sister go too? I'm 17 and my little sister is 15. Our dad died about 10 years ago. It was sudden and devastating. One day he kissed and hugged me and sis and told us he loved us and then we never heard from him again. At the time I couldn't fully grasp why he chose to stay away even though mom tried to explain it to us. I missed him and thought I did something wrong to make dad mad. I repeatedly called his phone hoping he would answer but it always went directly to his voicemail. At his funeral, I realized I would never see him again and I broke down. I don't remember much from that day except Uncle David held me the entire time. He held me throughout the funeral, during the drive home, and as I fell asleep that night. Uncle Alan did the same thing with sis. It wasn't easy growing up with just my mom and sis but not as tough as it could have been because the two uncles were always a phone call away. Whenever we needed help with school, one of the uncles was there to tutor us. One of them was always in the front row of every school performance and game. Whenever I wake up in the middle of the night and miss dad, I'll call Uncle David and know he'll always pick up. My mom eventually remarried to Bob. I never liked Bob because he always have to be in control and placed us on a strict schedule. 
Dinner was at seven every day no matter what. If we came home late and dinner was over, we weren't allowed to eat that night. Whenever our uncles gave me and sis money, we had to give it to Bob and he divided the money equally. A couple of months ago, sis and I were eating with Uncle David and his family. Our dinner conversation eventually led to where I want to go for college and how to pay for it. Uncle David told me that the uncles decided long ago they were going to pay for me and sis's tuition and cost of living on campus. I cried when I heard that and laughed when he jokingly said he hope I don't get into medical school because that's going to cost him a fortune. I went home and excitedly told mom and Bob that the uncles are going to pay for our colleges. Instead of being happy, they both looked furious and Bob started screaming about how unfair it was to our step-siblings and half-sister that were getting a free ride through college. He wanted me to tell our uncles to divide the college funds equally among the kids but I refused. The next day he kept on screaming at us so sis and I packed our bags to go to Uncle David's house. He kept on screaming and even followed us out to my car. Sis and I have been living Uncle David and his family ever since. This feels more like home than it ever did at our house. Mom has been asking us to come home for Christmas for a month now and I've been refusing. Today is the 24th and she's been calling all morning crying and saying how we need to spend Christmas with family. Am I wrong for not spending Christmas with mom? You poor thing. Not the asshole. If your parents pursue any legal action to compel you to come home, request a gal, guardian ad litem. They will represent your interests, not your parents or anyone else's. Am I the asshole because I slept in my daughter's bed? Throw away because my brother-in-law follows my main. I, 25F, got married to my husband, 24M, who we'll call Adam. When Adam and I were dating, I found out I was pregnant with my ex's kid. Adam didn't care and was thrilled because he's infertile, and has always wanted to be a dad. I tried for over a year to get in contact with my ex to see if he wanted to be a dad, and he nor his family ever answered me. Even when I went to their houses. So it has been my daughter's, 3F who we'll call Callie. Dad her whole life, and legally adopted her at 2. Sorry for the tangent, but it's relevant. We're in freezing cold weather, and have lost power during higher temps than this the last two years. A kid in our neighborhood got really sick last year because he nearly froze. So I set up my and my husband's bed to be a kind of tent so it would keep all the body heat in. It's a California king, so there's plenty of room for us, Callie and our dog who sleeps with us anyway. I got Callie ready for bed, and tucked her in in our bed to finish getting ready. Adam asked why she was in our bed, and I explained I was afraid of the power going out because we've already gotten warnings in the past two years. He was angry and said that he shouldn't have to share his bed with her because he might want, loving. I told him that I wasn't going to be in the mood tonight because it's 6 degrees and I'd be worried about Callie. Long story short, after a huge fight, I took the whole set up, so only leaving him the sheets, duvet and one blanket, and did it over my daughter's bed. I slept in there with her, and our dog followed us. Adam was so angry this morning that he accused me of wanting a divorce. I just told him that Callie was coming to work with me today, and I'm dropping the dog off at my mother's since she works from home so he's not alone in case the power goes off. Adam went off to work and I'm getting texts from my in-laws and a couple mutual friends. Someone even texted me that expecting him to share a bed with a girl he's not related to is disgusting, but that just makes me question him and his family that that's their thought process. Am I the asshole? I just was worried about my literal three-year-old. Even if I am though, I'm doing it again tonight. I just want to know because I'm furious at him for blowing it out of proportion, but maybe he's right to be mad? IDK. Edit. I didn't think to add this but a comment made me think I should Callie doesn't have free access to our room. Adam locks the door after I fall asleep, and because he's up and down all night, I can never stay up later than him. Callie has multiple times woken me up crying and banging on the door to get in after a bad dream, hearing weird noises, etc. Adam always apologizes but it keeps happening, so with her asthma I don't want to risk her being out in that cold for even a few minutes longer than she has to. Also Adam won't buy another top that goes over the beds to keep in the heat. He says they're a waste of money, not worth the price. I bought two last year but our dog ripped it, and I didn't have the money to buy another one. I plan to after the new year when I have a full check so Callie can always have one in the cold, just in case. Edit 2. Our home is technically in a trust for me from my aunt, but I'm taking my and Callie's stuff and staying with my mom while working on how to make him leave. Our dog is already there. 
Adam has been blowing up my cell phone and work phone because I haven't apologized and I'm ignoring his parents. My last straw was all the texts about him saying he wants to dissolve the adoption. When I leave him, because Callie doesn't respect him as her dad because she talks back, doesn't listen, runs away, has tantrums, and doesn't want to spend time with her if there's people besides us around. Again, she's three. Barely. She doesn't respect me most of the time either by his definition. I haven't responded to anything. I don't think I will for a while. Yes, we're in Texas so losing power is a constant stress. Adam has insomnia and has since he was a kid, which is why he gets up and down a lot. He has since we were kids. I've known his family since I was like 10. This is new behavior for him. Until about two months ago, he was perfect. He just randomly started locking the door, and he dots on her. His family has made it a point to let me know Callie isn't really their family, but we're LC with those that say that so it's a non-issue. Maybe he's back in contact with them though. Maybe he's upset about my new job, or that the house isn't really his. He won't discuss either of those things. I really don't know. He's in therapy already. Not the asshole. Adam is more worried about whether or not he'll get sex than he is for the life and health of his very young adopted child. He is not a father. Not the asshole. He can live without, loving, for a couple of nights a year when circumstances dictate. And hash x 200b. Expecting him to share a bed with a girl he's not related to is disgusting. What? She's his adopted daughter. Not the asshole. It's seriously gross that your husband puts his need or want for, loving, over the comfort of his daughter. And it's super weird that the relatives and friends are saying he's not related to his daughter. I'd have some serious issues with a spouse that acts that selfish. In ta and major red flags with him. Please reconsider this man in your lives. I'm afraid for you. My kids co-slept and grew out of it and are now both incredibly capable adults. Am I the asshole for rudely telling a guy to move after he ignored me when I said, excuse me? I, 26 female, was grocery shopping earlier and was almost at the end of the aisle. This guy saw me approach but he blocked the exit with his cart so he can look at something. I thought he'd be quick but he took his time so I said, excuse me. He looked at me but didn't move so I said, hey jackass move your cart so I can get out. His kid, toddler aged, on the cart giggled and started calling him a jackass and the guy turned beet red. The guy blocked me in further and said I'm a bitch but I said I tried to be polite. He finally let me out. Am I the asshole? Not the asshole. What the fuck is wrong with people that stop their carts in the middle of the aisle instead of leaving room to pass? Not the asshole. I absolutely despise people who block exits for their own personal shit. One excuse me should have sufficed. Then it's Jack's territory or worse. Not the asshole. Everyone saying everyone sucks here because of the name calling. He called her a bitch too. Yes, after. But clearly the child presence isn't a problem if he is going to retaliate. Also I don't know what kind of stores y'all are shopping at but there's easily enough room for two or sometimes even three carts to fit within the space of one aisle at every store I've ever been to. There is no reason he should position his cart in a way that nobody can get past him. Not the asshole. We should be allowed to carry cattle prods for such an occasion. Never any need to apologize for how you treat rude people.